before he gets that rune then. Like, he has to get that rune. If he can get that, that this lane for Empire is going to be a lot more, like, stable for them. Where's Admiral Baldock heading to? Look at him run. The bear's going up the lane. It's already got a stout shield on it, so this is the... And he puts the Observer Ward down to watch stacks? You can at least see the rotations. Actually, maybe that's what it's for. That ward will, ca will scout out if Spirit Breaker is moving from lane to lane. Especially mid to top or top to mid. Ah, uh, bottom though. Resolution, the shards are there. They've killed him. First one. My first one. 30 seconds to battle. Um, yeah. He came on a warding mission. He didn't even get it down. No. Alliance protect their jungle. The Observer was sitting on the lane, so they'll see resolution if he tries to come back down here again. It's not as bad for a Darkseer, because Darkseer is capable of just, like, catching up and farm. But you gave first blood over to a Queen of Pain, who's also going to get the first rune. Can the bear get the bounty top? Nah. No, Yoki's right on top of it. So S4, he oh went God. null- he went null talisman boo to boo- uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. Null talisman build to start with, and he's already got 460 gold on this Queen of Pain. Like, this is the dream start for a Queen of Pain in mid. Look and yeah. DK. Wait, wait, uh, is he? Is he? What? What? He started off with the double branch, double pool tango, bottle rush. And then he switched himself into- I think he's realized just how powerful S4 now is after getting both the bounty rune and the first blood. Yeah, getting these initial last sets is not going to be yeah. easy. He, he's actually changed this perfectly. And here we go again. The bear. Bulldog doing bulldog things. Alfredo. This used to be counted so heavily. Like, you used to have to bring, like, two tangos on the spirit bear to keep him alive while he did this because everyone would just counter the movement. And this time around, like, it's... <laughs> and he keeps the lane perfectly there. Like, this is, this is just the, this is the dream for Admiral Bulldog. This is an early level two. It's the it's the full pull. The, creep, the secondary creep waves coming down, so you can farm in the safety of his tower. And a low hard dance really can't do anything to stop this. Resolution's being attacked again. He could actually get sharded up right now if he's not too careful. Not oh, he's off target. Oh god, that should have been a kill. I I had no if he just went for the sidewinder. Um, but yep, yeah, that doesn't work. And the fact that Spearbreaker doesn't have a stout shield here means that you saw him trading hits with the bear and losing out pretty heavily. Yep. And the lone druid hero hitting into him as well. He just hope is like a spirit break. It's like, come on, like, he's got an orb of venom. Like, should that not give him the power of like toxicity against the spirit bear? Try and kill everything. Silent can't help him. Resolution again. Yep. But this time he's still in range of his tower. He's level two as like, well. Like, what made that a kill, or should have been a kill before from Nuts, was the fact that Resolution was just so far out from his tower. And now you'll see Rune Control. Nuts comes to protect the bottom rune. Are actually going on top? Yeah, Admiral Bulldog's being initiated on. And he'll actually go down here. Downside about Lone Druid. Gets slowed down so heavily from the Winter Wyvern. Looks like he got hit by the Splinter Blast as well. But you lose your Lone Druid on the off lane. He's already found two and a half levels two minutes in. And Yoku's got his bottle. But there's an invis rune for nuts. If he stays here long enough to get level two, S4 can just harass Yoku down. He's only got one point up with the dragon blood and two points up in the breathe fire. This is when nuts needs another creep to die. Like Yoku's got to overstay his welcome a little bit more. And then S4's got to blink as well as scream, and that's exactly what they use. The shards as well being thrown out. A very sing simple attack. Yeah, good rotations across, and you look at this Tusk now with 600 gold, he could potentially go into a bottle of his own, move between these lanes, and keep everyone regened up. Yep. Load is untouched the bottom lane, just free farming away. Like, this this Gyrocopter is going to be massive. In fact, even look at the Queen of Pain, 15 and 4 for her as well. Yep. This is, this is the perfect start for Alliance. They have a 1500 advantage only 3 minutes into the game for gold. Like, so, you, you couldn't ask for a better start from them. Yeah, just look at Resolution. It has been a long old time since we've seen something like this happen. Where we used to see Darkseers, you know, go back into the jungle because off lanes used to be more difficult. Yo, Yoku at mid. Yeah, he's, he's dead. He's in a world of hurt right now. Yeah, with the scream and the attack, the Shadow Strike won't do enough damage. Nuts gonna punch him once because the bottle charges were still there. Now find the kill and Nuts. Oh no. He needs to. No, he's dead. The attack from the tower will do the work. So DK at least gets something back, but. Like, what are you really getting out of this? The DK gets no experience, he still lost 119 gold. 
S4 is being charged, so there is a chance for Aloha Dance to find himself a pickup. S4 with that blink gets back in range of the tier one tower. Aloha Dance wants to commit for this, and now he's in too deep. The task gun will arrive. He can just sharp block up Aloha Dance. The bottle charges are there for S4 as well. Nuz provides that. You said it yourself that he can come in with a bottle. He actually brought S4s instead. Will they regen back up? Oh my goodness. Hey. Uh, is that Wraith Band or something? Yeah, uh, Ring of Aquila for, for Loda. But where, where did it die? It, it died to the aggro camp, I assume, is the only Are you thing. kidding me? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I'm not kidding you. That's actually what happened. <laughs> well, that's tragic. Yeah. There, there's, there's still some weird things that happen with the way the uh, creeps get aggroed. And then they attack into couriers like that. So uh, that's a bit of a, of a problematic problem. Aloha Dance and Silent, they're really diving in deep. But Admiral Bulldog, he's almost back to his tier 2 tower. Aloha Dance going in so deep. RK will TP in to help out. Dominate. But this is a lot of time wasted. Like the DK yes. dies in the middle lane. You're 4 0 1 on this Queen of Pain right now. Oh, this is, this is not the dream, man. But this this is well this is a dream if you're an alliance fan. The Aloha dance is in so much world of hurt as well. That's like S4's got the shadow strike again. Not even just snowball. It's snowball and shadow. So Aloha dance. He wants to oh, charge perfect. away, and the second he was about to do that, you could see the animation start. They find the kill. Silence should be able to survive on top. He's going to be cold embraced and having the healing ward down too. He did it twice as well. He started the animation cancel, trying to bait the snowball first, but nuts held onto it, knowing that he doesn't need to do anything just yet. And yep. Good execution. Resolution, in the meantime, has finally got himself into Soul Ring and Brown Boots, so he can put a little bit of pressure onto Loader down here, but I don't know how much. The fact you've got this, what, level 6 gyro? Level 3 in the Rocket Barrage means even with the charge forward from Spirit Breaker and a double Iron Shell, one TP in from the Dazzle, one TP in from the Tusk in this case, and they can actually look to turn and kill. N not to start coming. The Observer Ward sees all. It's about to time out, in 8 seconds time, they know exactly where Resolution is, and Nuts is just going to snowball in. They snowball to call down to, uh, to Shard Control. They need to get a little bit more vision on Aloha Dance, and maybe that's their issue. Where Nuts moves up, and yeah, now now he gets vision on him. Admiral Bulldog. Oh, Roots at top. Yeah, it's, it's chip damage right now, but Admiral Bulldog's still been having a very, very hard time. Well, Silent has been left alone, and he's got no more HP regen, so he relies on the healing ward to actually keep him up and running. But if he pops the healing ward, the bear is just going to go and kill it off, right? A another yep. entangle. That's the luck of the druid. Can you find something nice over on the on the courier, uh, on on the bear? He's got okay. He just spent a little bit of extra cash. It's the it's the rate band for loader that we just purchased up. That's not much more. Loader's got a lot of money too. Like, he can buy full treads, he can finish up the, uh, the Ring of Aquila, if he wants to. So there's, there's so much farm coming in for Alliance across the map. And what are you getting in return? Okay, so, you got 29 and 29 CS. So, Resolution's managed to find five and a half levels inside the jungle. That's some good CS for him. Considering he can't do anything on that offlane, they give it to Aloha Dance for the moment. Because at least they know Aloha Dance can't die to a gyrocopter. He doesn't have a stun. So Aloha Dance can soak up the experience. And if he does get zoned out, he gets zoned out. He's still getting levels. The biggest issue here is Yoku. You know, these rotations in from Alliance have really, really stalled up this DK. A hero who is notoriously bad at, you know, flash farming until he gets his... He gets his level 2 ultimate, even. Like, mm -hmm. refire is decent, but you've got to use it, like, three times on a, on a stacked large camp to actually clear through it. Yeah. At least. Yeah, and even you, then, you, you're you, stacking for him. You need the fourth level up and breathe fire if you're really going to start farming up stacks with the DK. But once he hits six, I don't even know if Alliance will be giving him the opportunity to take the tier one, because that's what a DK usually relies on. Is okay, Queen of Pain's level seven. She'll start roaming, right? She'll move yeah. to top, look for kills on the Juggernaut, maybe try and kill off the Dark Sarah bot lane, who's not there. Well, maybe you group up together. Okay, so if, if you're talking from that angle, Alliance won't let him be able to just push the tower, because the idea with the DK is you pop the ulti form, you get a couple of pops in, and the tower chips down. The second dragon form, you actually take out the tower. Uh, if you could combine your heroes together, you bring in the healing ward from the Juggernaut, you bring in the iron shells and the control from Resolution, you might be able to force out a lane yourself, but you're forcing a lane into cooldown, Sonic Wave, exactly. and it's... Um, you're marching your soldiers into the meat grinder. Yeah. It's, it's uh, like World War One, where the guys were on horses with, you know, sabers and swords, and the enemy had machine guns. Well, you should know all about it with the English gun beats. Yeah. Spirit Breaker running himself away. RK getting hit by this, and, uh, well, <laughs> the lizards? Nope. Aloha Dance will survive in 48 life.
Ah, but this this is now T1 Tower on bottom lane. Because Lodi can just sit on the flat cannon, takes out the creep wave, S4 is helping out, he's got Scream as well. So the first tower of the game will actually be taken out by Alliance. While Admiral Bulldog steals the farm away from the silence as he does the pull with the bear. Have we seen what Bulldog's buying yet? Uh, tranquil boots, nothing, nothing else on the bear. Like just, just a casual orb of venom. We saw Sila play this. Oh, was it? It was at MLG, wasn't it? We saw Sila go for the lone druid in uh, in one of the games. Uh, I was casting. My memory is not is not kicking in at this point for you. I'm sorry. He, he went for Maelstrom on the lone druid, and yeah, yeah, that's right. I can't remember who they were playing, but they. Went for this really fast pushing strat where they had like Shadow Shaman, Lone Druid, and they just went to try and destroy towers. And at like 15 minutes in, they took down bottom tier 3 from the dire side. Mm -hmm. And the Lone Druid did a great job. But he went for this very early build, and I've not seen too much of Lone Druid recently, and I'm just wondering whether Maelstrom is the way to go, and what kind of boots you actually get on him. Because now you've got the mana pool on this, uh, this old Spirit Bear, there are quite a few options to actually head into. Yeah, there is. Activatables to be used. Go for the Dagon. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the old thing. There was actually even a custom map in Warcraft 3 Dota where you had Dagon Wars from Couriers back when Couriers used to use mana. Oh yeah. That was uh, the good old times. Call in the airstrike. The ion cannon. That's really smart from what someone just did then. He dragged the creep wave over to the right to make sure that Lone Tour just couldn't drag the, the huge creep wave of experience down. So very, very smart from Sun, just trying to keep that lane throttled. Empire now try and find an opening too. There's no Winter's Curse over on the Wyvern, so they're attending this gank with Dragon Form. Now she leveled up Darkseer Wall as opposed to Vac. Yeah. This means they've only got themselves one stun. <laughs> I've got bashes. Oh yeah, they got a low hard dance down Charles. here already. Um, okay, well he just used his bash, and now the moving forward, load up. Well, they charge through and they're going over towards RK, but load up, the Sonic Wave hits from S4, hitting so big, the snowball as well, they've caught out two, they're gonna look for the three, Nuts is all over Empire right now in the bottom lane, Beard's gonna go down, a triple kill coming in for Nuts, and they mopped up the side, Empire lose four heroes, they forced the fight we said was suicide, and finally enough, it was suicide. <laughs> they can't. Toby! They did. They can't. They did. They shouldn't! They, they did. They shouldn't! They did. <laughs> oh, Empire. And Admiral Bulldog never even had to leave. He He's... shoved Silent off his lane. <sighs> okay, this is... They... Okay, they kind of needed to force something, because Alliance was just out farming them, and the timing for Alliance is still so much better than Empire's. Because the DK is not hitting it. As you said, like they, they can't force down buildings, so all they can do is force the fights. They thought they had the man advantage, but then they fought underneath the tier 1 tower on the bottom lane. The snowball timing was perfect. The call down was right. Uh, and there's just no more joy to be had when you when you do something like that underneath the tower. I mean, they, they smoked up for a kill, and they had to find behind the tower. They need to find something away from the damage and support location TPs of Alliance. And even so, like, the charge was good, focusing on the Dazzle, looking for that heal in the back, but Shadow Wave was there, the Grave was available. I, I don't even see Loaded dying initially, never mind with the TPs coming in to try and save him out as well. Uh, okay, it was the LGD versus EG game, according to the guy, in the, the, a couple of the guys in the chat. So, okay. uh, and that was the game that LGD lost. Yeah, LGD lost. <laughs> yeah. Like, was it EG? Uh, by the sounds of it, it was EG. Okay. Yep. But yeah, this... LGD... Oh... Well, we can't... Rem what? <laughs> well, he, he did. <laughs> nice joke. Oh, <laughs> oh. Nice jo what a, what? Oh, oh, that's, that's the man. meme. I give props for resolution for that one. Because it's a crack of what happened at D2CL the other night. Yep. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Amazing They're stuff. They're good to go. They're good to go. A full remake, but I'm sorry, Empire Alliance will have a one-game advantage in this two-game series. <laughs> a one-and-a-half-game advantage, Toby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? No draft time, and Alliance picked the heroes for Empire. <laughs> they got double bounty rune and first blood. That's what can set it all off. That's, that's actually what... Okay, so... Okay. To anyone that was around during the old Warcraft 3 times, the way that she sort out something like that, if someone couldn't connect in, you're 11, 1120 in. 
you'd actually have to get it back to almost where you were. So you start with the same warning, the same kills, the same first bloods. If the bounty runes were there, which they went in Warcraft 3, like, you'd have to give them the runes at that position. If Roshan was taken at that time, you'd have to un like not contest to take that. As if both teams didn't agree for the full remake. You'd have to give him the advantage. Top lane, charge coming down from Bulldog. He didn't ulti form, and you don't have a level 6 over on Lone Druid. If you get entangled, you're in a world of hurt, but... There's Midas on the bear, but no boots. So Tranquil's on himself, and Bulldog went for the Midas on his spirit oh, He's bear. so greedy. Uh, he, he's but you, free to do it. The honestly. funny thing is, you can run double Midas with, with Lone Druid. You can, but I don't think it's great. It's, uh, I'm not saying it's terrific. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying it's a possibility. <laughs> It depends on the on the level of greed that you want. The only issue is you can only get experience from one of them. Because you don't get experience when you use Midas on the bear. You only get you can experience... Switch them across, though. Hmm? Yeah, you, 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 you can switch them across, and then, yeah, but the uh, the cooldown is still associated to either the hero or the bear. Oh, yeah. So, if you run dual Midas, don't think you can just, like, switch it back and forward. Oh, yeah, that's true, because it's item-dependent, not hero-dependent. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, hero-dependent, hero not item-dependent. Other, yeah. other way around. Yeah. Other way around. <laughs> I don't agree with you on that one. Um, Wyvern. Oh, Nuns is here, and S4 gonna kill Secure with the Scream. Now, this is the point where Empire do not want to engage. They have the Observer Wards, they have Vision, but S4 still has a level 1 Sonic Wave available, and they're chasing. Yoku triggering Dragon Form for this as well. The Snowball comes up and Resolution was on the other side. I think you must have been hoping to pincer Alliance in, but Alliance just take kill after kill. Okay. The charge is coming on Arca. He can't get the Shallow Grave down. The cooldown will connect with Alohar Dance and S4. That's a two-man Sonic Wave kicking up right there. Alohar Dance will be hit. The Omni Slash will happen, but none. He can't Snowball. He has one second off the cooldown. S4, you'll separate defensively up and towards the end. Finds him to time as a triple kill for Silence. He's just found the strength when it counts, giving him a 3 for 4 trade off Apple Bulldog. This time he comes in to help out his teammates. Actually, what ends up being a 3 for 3 trade? 3 for 5. If yeah, you count the yeah, Wyvern. Yeah, they killed the Wyvern beforehand. Yeah. As well as the Darcy. Yeah, so 3 for 5 trade off. We just don't get it in the team fight recap. I kind of feel like that's worth it for Empire. Like, well, not when, just when they're a that bit. far behind, sure. And I momentum to a juggernaut. Like, what's the Jugger going to get from this now? He's just managed to pick up so many kills. What does he get? SNY, he's finished off his Yasha. Going to SNY, just go to full stats build. The worry is that Darkseer... Oh, I guess he's nearly finished his max, so he's not even that screwed over. Aloha? Roshan? Uh, uh, he's dying to earn. He's dying to earn. Oh, very close. He had enough damage to kill him off. Now Dragon Knight's in trouble with the Shadow Strike to bear. There he finally will get the Entangle. Took him a while, but uh, now Yoku. The Dazzle Poison Touch. Oh, Loader. No, that's, that's naughty. That's not naughty. No fear just stands there's like, yeah, I'm... Um, I'm dead. That's <laughs> nice, man. That's not naughty, that's nice. So like eight. Sneaking all the way across. That's what it's all about, man. 18 to 6, you move through, you take out a building. Lone Druid gets more space. Loader gets more farm. He's already got his Sanch. And then building in. He's got a casual Morbid Mask on himself. It'll work later into the Satanic. But he just wants the SMY for now. And with the Yasha already flying out to him too. He's so close to getting that SMY. And what do you really get out from Empire? So you get a mech over on the darks here. That's not bad. But there's no arcane boost. He's running Soul Ring. So getting himself over towards uh, Greaves is going to take a little bit longer. The Juggernaut, he's got his Yasha drums PMS, so that's nice for him. But the issue I feel for Silent is that there's just still so much tank ability over on Alliance. When you got the Lone Druid Bear in there as well, Omni Slash doesn't do as much. Yeah, then add in the Grave and the Blink and the Yule Scepter. Yeah. They definitely build themselves up not only not only well with their skill sets, but also optimization. The Yule's actually so smart for S4. Because the Tuscar, the Lone Druid, as well as the Dazzle can all survive the attack. So so can the Gyrocopter, really, when he's got that sound up and running. So the Omni Slash, like, you're fine. But S4's putting himself in very risky positions. So he needs to have something defensive like that Yule Scepter. Also great cancelling out the charge from the Spirit Breaker. Yep. Stopping the Dark Seer in his tracks. You know, cancelling out TPs. So many great uses for the Yule Scepter this game. Blink forward, take out the Wyvern. Yeah. If you don't get a curse at the start of the fight, maybe you can get that kill before he hits the ground from the Yule Scepter. You got Sonic Wave, and he is going to go into the Aghanim Scepter build for uh, Restful. Looks like it's Midas into Maelstrom. For the bear. Okay. 
Another glob of hay. Uh, this tower trade-off. TPs are coming down. That's S4, not front TP. Silent wants to go for the Omni Slash, but uh, S4 is trying to bait him. Goes for the Yule set for his head. Silent's going to start losing out in armor, and S4 jumps forward. Shadow Strike unable to connect. The Snowball also will not reach up to a low hard answer. Shards are too far away, and Nuts, yeah, you're not punching Jack. They are way too far away for you to reach him. But you trade a tier 2 tower for heavy damage on your own tier 2 tower. Silent is sticking around here. He's not TPing out, he's not farming enemy jungle, he just wants this wave down the bot. I, I guess Alliance natural move is to kind of transition towards mid, maybe get into the enemy jungle, because this uh, jungle, three heroes up here, Bulldog, he's been trying to make his mark, trying to take as many creeps as he can, but, uh, no, allowing Silent just to free farm so aggressively down this bottom lane. It's, it's dangerous. This Juggernaut is kind of like the, it's the, it's the key. He's the key to Team Empire. If he can complete up, is, is it going to be an S1 or is it going to be a Mana style? And the reason why I say Mana is because of Entangle. Ooh. Just the Entangle. Well, I guess I guess it's well, worth, what, what, <laughs> worthwhile, hey. Yeah, if you think about it, like, what are you going to do? you got Shadow Strike, Entangle, you got potential Task Guard jumping on you, maybe you can even Mana style out of the shards. Yeah. There's... There's a couple of things which, like, is making me question that. Also, the fact that he hasn't spent his money where he's got 2,300 gold. You could like, have it finished. That's, that's, yeah, he, he should have actually finished the SMI oh, by Yoku. now. Yoku? Oh no, the blink! Mm, too early. The Observer Ward was down, so we saw Yoku coming in. In fact, they're gonna re-engage the Snowball in. It's just nuts running in. The Weasel connect on three, and Empire don't want to stick around here for too long. The Wyvern goes up on the hill, but the Calder Resolution runs away. Yoku, he's still in the neighborhood, but there's no Sentry Wars. There's no detections. The Glimmer came to protect him, but Loader ends up finding him. Aloha Dance will charge himself in as well. But this is Empire caught on the wrong side of the river. They might have got the kill on the task already, but S4, net the strike. The Yule Scepter's up. No way to finish that one, but the DK, because the Yule Scepter was used, he can TP himself away to safety. Also, because he was out of vision of the Alliance. That's so much dropped by Empire, honestly. Wall, Winter's Curse, Dragon Form, everything's on cooldown outside of Omni Slash. So Empire right now, definitely on the back foot, but they do get Silent Tier 2 down in bottom lane. So that's going to give him, like you said, the full Manta style. Bob bomb And it's complete. I get to feel even more chuffed about myself. Uh, but Yoku's got the Glimmer Cape. This has been an interesting item choice picked up on DKs, and I know a lot of us did some talking when Glimmer Cape was first introduced, the fact you can disassemble it. And yep. Cloak on a DK is amazing, honestly. He's got good strength gain, the armor, and then add in the magic resistance as we're watching Aloha Dance charge uh, forward. He's, not, he's, just, he's just playing like chicken. Like, that's, all, that's all that is right there. But then you, you know, you go into the Shadow Blade, you've got that casual cloak you can sell later on. Just good form of initiation, tanks yourself up. It's smoke time. We have the royalties. Empire's getting so far. Oh, they got Nether Strike and the Dragon Form is back off cooldown in 20 seconds time. Omni Slash is up. So both Curse as well as Dragon Form should be up around the same time. But you are right, like, if they get caught out here. Like, Alliance also smoked themselves up. Nuts gonna break it, actually stealing. He bottles the double damage room, buys time with the snowball, and now Yoku's too far away. They let the call down go, although Alliance trying to keep up. Nuts, the Shallow Graves, they're back into a four-man wall. That'll do some serious work, but not really enough. The black cannon from Loda, the Omni Slash isolated. The curse will lock him down too. Loda will drop, and then Pyro on the charge. S4 still needs a good time. The Yule set rubble fire trying to blink away, but he had no Sonic Wave in this fight. So Alliance also with ulties down. The bear will be a casualty of war. It's running away. Three seconds until it can actually come back. No, it will live. That's actually quite big for Lone Druid. Keeping it off cooldown, he can bring it back over and scout for Roshan, which is Empire's next task. The ulties come off cooldown at like the perfect time, uh, honestly. Yoku, no ma'am. They're also freaking tanky. There, there's Sonic Wave available. That's the dominated creep coming in from Loda. So it'll come in to scout out Roshan. Sees the fact, obviously, they are committing to it. And you've got two bears. Actually, he resummoned. He resummoned his bear before this fight began. The charge come in. The Sonic Wave silent. Luckily, not to get hit by that one. He trying to protect himself with spin, but obviously, it's pure damage. The Yule stepped up. It catches out Aloha Dance. Yep, Silent can't finish the job. Yoku's running away as well. So Roshan's away. They have to TP out. And Alliance will actually regather Roshan. Man. Wow, that's the thing. No buybacks had to be used. They basically just respawned into it. 
And now you can give an Aegis the Immortal over either Loader or the Lone Druid, and in fact it will be Loader. Yeah, the way Loader got ripped apart there by that level 2 Omni Slash in the previous fight, he definitely wants this one up. But he's, he's, soaked, he's soaked up both Omni Slash as well as Curse. Like, that was probably the bigger thing. It allowed Alliance space to move around, that they didn't have to lose so many heroes after they lost Loader. He did so much damage with cooldown and flight cannon, because he still got his attacks off. So Loader did his job. He died for his job, but he did, still did his job. Resolution's even going to go into a pipe. Something that we don't very often see. No. Like, you see it up against heroes like Ancient Apparition. Yeah, against the Zeus Beast, you see it pretty common as well, but... Up against these guys, a lot of their magic is what pure and physical. Out of the Dazzle, Queen of Pain, magic mm -hmm. damage is really limited to Rocket Barrage, Cooldown, and Scream. Pretty much. Interesting that Empire actually go in for this. Now maybe finishing off the Greaves, I think Blink Dagger definitely would be an amazing At the same, item. At the same time, he did get that four-man back wall. Without it, Blink. Without the Blink Dagger, but it's the combination. It's having both Wyvern as well as Darkseer with the Blink Daggers. But Wyvern doesn't have his Blink Dagger. Hence that combo, like, you go for the four-man back wall, you need to have the curse follow up after it. And it didn't happen. So, now the mid lane gets forced out. Admiral Bulldog's even putting himself at risk. The Aghanim Scepter is done over on the Queen of Pain. And they found a target. They snowball in. There goes your Sentry Ward. Yoku. They send him up as well as Entangle. With a call down. It's a good back into a wall. And there's your curse combination. Loaded dies almost instantly, but it's the Aegis of the Immortal only. Your curse is down. Your wall's been used. At least Silent didn't blow his Omni Slash. Oh, Aloha. He doesn't have charge either. He's dead. Yeah, he goes for the Nether Strike, but he's already going to tick out. 34 seconds on the sideline. You burn through your Aegis the Immortal. Yes. They can but there's, and push here. Yeah, they can. There's no curse, there's no wall. There's no only Omni Slash as well as Dragon Form. What's going to really stop Alliance? Nothing, really. They put Load up on the front lines. Medallion from the Dazzle keeps him up and running. Wait a second, what? They're TPing the bear back. <laughs> the bear TPs the base. Okay. Yeah. I always forget you can do that now. And then he summons it back with... You said he can use mana, man. Now the Spirit Bear moving forward, starting to beat to the tower. Silence. He doesn't want to fight this one. If he does, like, he's hitting into the bear, which is nice, but Admiral Bulldog has got to resummon. And they can always just, like, keep it up. Like, you had the weave with 22 bonus arm. Aloha Dance charges into that. Yoku's still behind them. Coming in with that Shadow Blade. That was the disassemble we were talking about. But Admiral Bulldog, he goes for the fresh resummon. They get rid of the healing ward. But Empire's oldies are coming back off cooldown. 35 seconds, as well as 24. And Alliance is just going to give them the road. Time to extract. Like, bot lane, there's so much farm to be had. And with Empire all groups up inside their own base. Yeah, there we go. They're going to go again for another smoke. Try and get these ulties off in a choke point somewhere, but... It's it's going to be like one or two heroes. There's no way they get yeah. the same situations they did before, but yep. it's a five-man group up. I think Empire would be They're happy. So split. Like, like, they only happened last time because we're a shot. And you could only happen in the middle lane because they're pushing together as a, as a group. When Alliance back up like this, they're just looking to farm. So Empire just looking for one kill and move on to an objective. They still have that tier one tower in the middle lane to kill. So Shadow Blade forward, back behind the tower is not going to help you. The Observer Ward's in place, but Alliance, they just stay back really, really far. And there's no vision. Like, Alliance have vision, like, deeper inside the base. Okay, no fear. Now. <gasps> He's in the trees! S4! Didn't see him! He didn't see him! He did TP out! Okay. Joyful times for Empire. They get out scot free after the fail gank. Oh, he's charged. Hello, and that's charging. Oh, no, he's charging down bottom lane. He's getting away from S4. Blink. Yules. Caught. Brilliant. Easy. And you go for the Nether Strike, but S4 won't really care. Best snowballs coming in. If he needs to, he can commit the Sonic Wave. No, they will. Yeah. It's a, it's a 40 second cooldown. <laughs> He's perfectly alright with this. No reason not to. Now, really great awareness from RK realizing that likely that they smoked up and actually went somewhere because they didn't see them anywhere on the lanes. Empire made the movement through their jungle. And he placed the Sentry Ward down, expecting an observable to be placed by Empire in one of these two areas. Which is, you know, very common from them. But the one on the lane towards the mid between the tier 1 and tier 2 is actually where they were aiming for. I, I wonder if he'll try and deboard there as well. Does well they just buy a gem. He's got sentries to still end. Well, they just buy a gem. <laughs> You're up against Shadow Blade, uh, Shadow Blading, Glimmer Caping Heroes. Just buy a gem. Well, the chase is on. It's up after Silent. Runs himself away as far as he possibly can. There's your Yule Scepter. 
I suppose you didn't. Oh, yeah, Sonic Wave, they got it. There's no flyback, you know? Yeah, that's a one minute opportunity. That should be mid racks, actually, because of it's this. Really far from the tier three, though. You. Yeah. But I you're, think you're pushing take... power and the fact that tier 3 tower is already down to half-life and you got a fresh Vlad's flying out in the courier. you got the auras and the confidence to go. Loader wants to clear out the stack of Ancients first. And I guess the fact is, even without the Juggernaut, you're still dealing with back wall curse and the DK. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit risky. I think at best they pick down like tier 3 and may maybe at best like the range racks. Melorax wouldn't fall. So the safe option here for Alliance is just to farm themselves up. Get into the next item for S4. And has Loader decided what he's heading into now? BKB after SY and Helm. Tanking himself up as much as he possibly can. And honestly, that's what you need to do. Make sure that they can't kill you with that one big wombo combo. Yep. So right now, the Spirit Breaker basically is just like... the. Here's the avenue which Empire used to bait Alliance into a clumped up position. He charges in, forces Alliance to turn and say, Hey, let's kill this guy. Yep. If they do, they get the vacuum wall with the curse down. If they don't, then maybe you know, I could chase down the Dazzle or someone like that. It should never happen though, because you've like Avril Bullock should always keep his distance. The bear is the frontline tanker. And you actually see now over on the bear, he picked up a sacred relic. So you got relic as well as mouse from over on this bear. He's starting to do more damage. Is this meant to be the Radiance play? Do you get a Radiance 27 minutes into the game? Admiral Bulldog. I don't think so. Is it then meant to be Abyssal Blade? I think you go for like, game ending items. Well, the Abyssal Blade's kind of going to be sorta it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's that... But if you're going to get that, you would have gone for the Basher at the start. That's the reason why like I'm thinking it's a Radiance we'll instead. See. He's probably going to buy the Radiance recipe now, isn't he? Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's a Radiance build. It's a Radiance build coming in from Bulldog. So this now makes life a little bit more difficult for Empire because they keep burning at the start of the fights. See, I was thinking more like Abyssal AC, go for those, you know, high ground pushing or completely team wipe oriented items where you kill off one hero, then get the numbers advantage and just think, snowball from there. Maybe think of it from a different angle. Think of the old Lone Druid, the always like Radiance Rush that you split push build. Yeah. How does Team Empire deal with split push? Not very well. Exactly. They group around one tower and throw all of their shit down onto the Alliance. Basically it, man. Which makes the Radiance pick up the perfect item 28 minutes in. Silence and a little bit of trouble on the bottom lane. Uh, but there's more support coming in. That lone drill with the Radiance burns already up. And Silence is going to TP himself away to safety. Bear doesn't get there in time to get an entangle off. Poor Alfredo. And Yoku? Yeah. Going to the BKB. It's taken so long for him though. 30 minutes in. What, what even is the net worth of this Dragon Knight? It's sub 10k at 30 minutes. Super rough for him. Yeah. Even the Doctor has actually surpassed him with the Blink now up. Pipe, Mech, Greaves soon going to be on the cards. Yeah. It's difficult for Alliance to actually breach though, right? It is. Without an extra Roshan, which but is what both teams are going to be looking at. Late spawn though. I think Alliance, they can rely on what Team Empire has been doing the rest of the time. Like you talk about how Spirit Breaker keeps coming out as this bit of a trap. They've got the control on him that they can just get the kill and then move up. And Alliance don't need to force the issue up high ground. All they need to do is maybe, like, it, once you get Roshan, then you could be looking at the ability to force up high ground. At all other times, you just wait it out. Wait for Empire to come to you because they've shown time and time again, they will come. Like, like you farm it and they will come. <laughs> they see a target and they will chase you down. Yeah, pretty much. And Team Empire, here they come. So all you have to do is wait for it. Nuts is already there. S4 blinked himself out. The shards fly up. Can't lock in any heroes into, an, into a bad position. This is a difficult spot to defend for Empire. It kind of is, but at the same time, this is probably the best position they could find. Like, it's, it's the group up cluster. A low heart dance that isn't really the dream, however. The bear gets the entangle, the shards get the kill. No spirit breaker for 37 seconds. He can buy him back, yeah. The sentry wards are down. Um, and inside the lane, the sonic wave will connect. And this DK trying to retreat back out again. Why? But no speed comes from behind. And he gets a three man curse. But Air Force not involved in it. The snowball comes in through. There's no fall damage with the call out. Resolution no fear of death. And a triple kill for Loader. The Omni Slash gets mopped up by the rest of the Alliance team. Silent is no way out. He's on the run, but that bear is steaming towards it. Nuts on the front line, too. He can just go for the shards and try and hold Silent in, but he might be worried. He can just, okay, he just goes for the snowball. That'll do the work instead. And Silent stands his ground, but yeah, not for a kill for Loader. Alliance 
They won game one very, very comfortably. In game number two, patience has been their friend as they look to take out game number two at this rate. As soon as Silent TP onto that tier two, I had the feeling that something terrible was going to happen for Empire, and it did. Defending this, defending this tower in particular is awful for you, especially if your Spirit Breaker charges forward and runs into a position where he just gets caught out with no one else, uh, no one helps to save him. Yeah. Like if they manage to drag Alliance back behind the tier two, then it's perfect because they have the choke point on the ramp, and they can actually get the full efficiency from their spells. Yep. But at this rate, they just lost a whole lane of racks for nothing in return. Yep. And they'll continue to lose more. Like that's that's their problem. How do you stem the bleeding? You don't. Hey, it, it really is impossible. Even when you get the big ulti combo, the issue is that Alliance... Okay, they... <laughs> the timing, the timing. Just wait for it, boys. <laughs> boom! Roshan's up. RK has a look, and boom! Roshan's there. Uh, so basically, their only hope is to be able to get a huge amount of damage out during the curse time. But their only damage output is coming from DK with Breathe Fire as well as the spell damage. It's not a Frost Dragon, so they don't even have the slow on that. So Alliance, when they when they when when the curse is over, they just back out. Your Dark Tier back wall combo can't do enough because he can't blink dagger himself. Okay, he can blink dagger himself forward, but Abra Bulldog's too far back. S4 holds back. Tuscar holds back. They wait for the curse to happen, and then they blink in and snowball protect. It's, it's just the fact that Empire just don't have the skills to pay the bills against what Alliance have already farmed up. Like, they've paid their bills, and now they're on the Luxury Holiday. <laughs> Where? Where are they taking this holiday? Man, things are heating up, man. They've gone directly over to Jamaica on this holiday. It's a wonderful country. Silent, you are dead. Spin, he's not even, like, there's no TP on him, so he's just well, trying to stand his ground with it. Silent. But that's one minute with Silent on the sidelines. The way he re also reacts, that just shows you that he just took his hands off the keyboard. Yeah, that making me crazy. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's good! Oh, I give that one props. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Twitch chat. I'm sorry, viewers. Uh, I, ha I, ha I had to. He, uh, he, he, Toby, Toby was just looking at me, mouthing the words. I, I had to pull I, out the I pond. did not do that. I did not do that. He is speaking lies, Twitch chat. Lies, I say. This is my contract. Don't Force. trust Zerka. Don't trust Zerka at all. Okay. Here's a double interact, honestly, for free. No glyph. No, uh, no juggernaut. They have to wait for the juggernaut. Like, you're going to lose range. You're going to lose your melee. You need the Omni Slash to fight. Really Yoku just forward. says, screw it. He's going after S4, but S4 has got 45 bonus armor because the Weave is there. The Sonic Wave is Empire Folly. A low R dance goes for his jump. He bounces S4 back, but the Shallow Grave will keep him alive. Yoku even goes with a Breeze Fire, but he can't reach S4. I think that's now what this game has turned into. Who can kill off S4? Resolution on the back line. I don't think you'll have any success either. Late this mail. is 33 for 9. Yeah. That's uh, wait, what? No, no, no. Because the game's no. over. Yeah. Toby. Yeah. <laughs> he killed me. Oh, no. There we go. There we go. But that's it. I'm pretty sure the G's are coming. Resolution's still on the run here. Run right away, Resolution. Nuts can't snowball just yet. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, GG. This game is over. Empire have officially lost this, even if they're not calling it themselves. There you go. Resolution will finally do it. GG is the call. Alliance take the theory 2 0. And with that. They haven't secured it, but it's pretty damn close. It's on the edge of the bag. On the precipice. Yes, they will be attending the LAN finals for the defense. Because with this, they now go 7-1. So, not even that. They go more than that. Yeah, no, no. They go 7-1. That takes them up into first position with the most amount of wins. Monkey Business is sitting right next to them with 6-0. Haven't lost a single game, but Alliance did have that 1-1 result, I believe, to Team Alternate was the team they had that result against. 